Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I'm honored to have this opportunity and share my personal story of struggle and empowerment as an immigrant in Canada. I want to include in the very beginning, I might ramble or I might sound very nervous because this is my first keynote speech here and my participation in an international conference. Four years ago, it was my first time in Canada and four years, almost four years later, it is my first time in New York, USA. My journey has been one of unlearning, transformation and strength. And I hope that my words can inspire others who may be going through similar experiences. I am a 27 year old immigrant who migrated to Canada in 2019. And I'm the first woman in my family to immigrate, study and graduate from a foreign university. I completed my post baccalaureate in North American businesses with a concentration in international strategy and entrepreneurship from Capilano University, Vancouver, Canada. However, my journey has far from easy. Like many immigrants, I came to Canada with the hope of creating a better life for myself, getting out of my comfort zone and experiencing a new environment. Back in my home country, I had a reasonably good life with home health to cook, clean, drive, modern amenities and whatnot. Therefore, moving to Canada was more than an adventure to explore myself than a need itself. When we think of immigration, we think of a journey filled with hope, excitement and the promise of new opportunities. However, what many do not realize is the immense mental breakdown and toll that comes with leaving behind one homeland culture and support system. Over the past four years, I have experienced and faced challenges of unlearning and learning a process that has significantly impacted my mental health in many ways. And I believe that has been the case of many immigrants as well. Today, I will delve into sharing and understanding what an unlearning process is, how complex and multifaceted it is, and how it impacts the mental health and well-being of immigrants. We will also reflect on whether this unlearning or learning is a source of resilience or struggle. Lastly, I will also emphasize on the importance of specialized mental health resources or other resources that immigrants need after migration, whether at school or in work places. Now, what is an unlearning process? Anybody here who would like to share their thoughts, what they think an unlearning process is for them or in general? Yes? You feel like it would be unlearning something that you've been positioned to think or mm -hmm. a way of thinking that you were taught in a different culture? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? Every process is a learning process. Yes. Every. Yes, that's correct. And how closely it is tied with unlearning. It's not important that every time we are learning, we have to start from the scratch of learning an important concept or anything. Sometimes we have to unlearn what we were deeply ingrained with. So as per a scholar called Bo Hedberg, in, in his 1981, he was one of the first scholars to introduce the concept of unlearning in organizations. He defined unlearning as the process of discarding or modifying existing knowledge, skills, attitudes, or beliefs that is no longer useful or relevant. In other words, the process that helps to break down the reasons of our thoughts, attitudes, behaviors, feelings, and even biases and prejudices. It's asking ourselves, where do these beliefs come from? Do this support my mental health? Is this in alignment with the life I want? Is this incongruent with how authentic I can be? Does this resonate with me? Or do I believe this true to myself? Unlearning is not easy. It requires courage, compassion, openness, patience. It also takes a lot of guidance, resources, and support. It means challenging everything that we have come to know as the way things are supposed to be and embracing the way things are. So I was in the middle of these two things when I was going through this process. 
and also more importantly what things resonate and not resonate with us. So I'm going to talk about how this began, how this unlearning journey began for an immigrant, for me and my fellow peers. So this is a short brief summary or timeline of my immigration journey to Canada so far. I applied for a study visa in 2019 and shortly when I was approved, I booked my flight to Vancouver in the fall of 2019. The picture that I put was my first foreign flight ever. I crossed seven oceans apart from where I came from. And when I first arrived, I was very excited and hopeful. I had dreamed of studying abroad and pursuing my career goals. I had worked hard to get here and was ready to face any challenge. I soon realized that living in a new country was not as easy as I had imagined. The first few months were a whirlwind of emotions for me. I faced many difficulties and barriers such as language, even though I studied my school in an English speaking school. But when I moved here, even the, the accent or certain slangs, they were hard to understand for me. And there were also other difficulties such as culture, discrimination, isolation, financial stress, and many other things. Meanwhile, I was also trying to understand and navigate the North American education system. It was so very different from where I came from. I had my bachelor's from my home country and going through a post baccalaureate degree, even though you're just supposed to study in a degree, but the way you navigate that whole degree and education system was very hard. I felt like I did not belong here. I felt like I had to change myself in order to adapt to North American culture, society, and expectations. I constantly felt like I had to give up something, give up my identity, values, beliefs, and traditions. I also realized that I had many biases and stereotypes about myself and others. For example, I thought immigrants were inferior, and the place where I'm coming from, going to, and the people over there are more superior. And mental health was a taboo topic, and therapy was for weak people, and culture was fixed and static. These biases made me feel so insecure, judged, and misunderstood, and I started facing difficulties to express my needs. They also made me avoid seeking to support from others who could understand me or help me. All of these changes made me feel very isolated. But what does that mean for your mental health? How do you cope up with that stress, the loneliness, the confusion, and the loss that comes from immigration? How do you deal with the expectations and pressures that are placed on you by yourself and others? How do you balance your own needs and desires with those of the society? Soon I started to reflect that these feelings are not really mine. These are put on me or forced on me or made, or made me learn these things from my upbringing, my education and my society. They were not really in alignment with who I really was or what I wanted to be. They were also not supporting my mental health and well-being. So as time passed, I began to realize that in order to thrive in this new environment, I had to let go of my old ways of thinking and embrace a completely new mindset. I realized that unlearning and learning did not erase or did not mean losing or erasing who I really was. It meant expanding and enriching of who I could be or what could be. It meant discovering new perspectives. I was in a land surrounded by people from different ethnicities, background, education, career. I felt like this is my time to embrace diversity and inclusion. It meant finding strength and empowerment in my own voice and story. This process also allowed to confront the biases that I had in me, the prejudices and challenging the beliefs that I held for very long. Hence, unlearning is very important for immigrants who face unique challenges and stressors in the journey of adaptation and integration. For many immigrants, the unlearning process is a double-edged sword. Before I start digging deeper into what empowered me, in fact, encouraged me to stand here, share my story, I would briefly share the negative impacts of this unlearning processes that I faced and many immigrants faced during this period of transformation. First being emotional stress. According to a research by Citizenship and Immigration Canada 2012, recent ex immigrants experience higher levels of emotional problems than other groups. 
They report higher levels of stress related to finding accommodation, navigating a new education system, culture barriers, communication barriers, family issues, mainly because of separation from relatives and marital conflicts, cultural differences because they would be adjusting to new values and norms. Another uh, impact on the mental health was related to disorientation and associated frustration. After moving to a new country, it's a common phenom phenomena that people think that they have to start their life from scratch, which is true to many extent. And they go through a period of confusion where they feel like, where do I even start from? They are aware of a lot of things, but they have this instinct in them that they do not know where to begin. For example, as an immigrant, I came from a very collectivist culture that valued family and tradition. I had to learn, unlearn some of the culture norms and expectations that were incompatible with the general individualistic culture of where I was going to. Unlearning these norms made me question who I was, what I believed in, and that was causing a lot of feeling of me getting lost and conflicting about my own identity. I found myself constantly comparing to my old lifestyle as well. Language and communication barriers were also affecting my health and my fellow immigrants. I started feeling isolated and alienated from my own culture and community. And uh, culture shock was also one of the other things that immigrants feel. Um, being separated from your own country and not being able to celebrate the culture or traditions that you were brought up with and you would celebrate uh, if you were living with your family. I had to unlearn a lot of certain customs and behaviors that might not be appropriate or accepted in new home. This can be very difficult. It felt like betraying my own roots. And there were also feeling of grief and loss of being separated. So early learning can also cause immigrants to experience grief and loss for what they have left behind. As an immigrant, I had to unlearn a lot of memories and attachments, places, people, and objects that were very meaningful. I felt sad, nostalgic about what I had given up for migration. All of these were leading to periods of frustration, exhaustion, and ultimately low self-esteem for me. As I mentioned earlier, navigating a different education system, and I moved here in 2019. For six months, I had in-person classes. That's what I signed up for. That's what I got my visa, study visa for. After six months, it was just not only me who was navigating through an online school, it was my professors as well. I started to realize they have been living here for so long, and they are also unlearning a lot of things. They used to come to school and teach me. Now they are also adapting to an online education system. And same, when I started my internship, I had to, I was facing productivity issues because I was not efficient in a lot of ways, not because it was taking time to learn to what I was supposed to learn in an internship, but unlearn what I used to do in my previous workplaces back in home country. Uh, cultural barriers, that is related to new culture adaptation, new norms and everything, not able to accept multiculturalism because a lot of immigrants are too tied up to their old lifestyle, disconnection from their own culture, heritage, and roots. Um, next being financial burden to seek resources. That is in a lot of ways related to lack of awareness. When, I, when my mental health was not aligned with how well I wanted to be because I had so many things to focus on, I was not aware of the free resources that my university had. Again, this could be part of uh, not being able to go through cultural orientations. I was not prioritizing my mental health because I thought there are other things I need to focus on and, and in the end I faced many consequences later and that is the case for many immigrants. Uh, pressurizing environment, we have so many expectations from old society and then the new society and building a new support group in a new country takes a lot of time. That creates pressure and affecting other important priority areas in life. So all of this led to a period of significant transformation. During this entire process, I had to rely on my own resilience to push through. I began to unlearn certain behaviors and beliefs. I also began to experience positive changes in my mental health. 
I started to feel empowered, confident, connected to my new environment. I realized that unlearning was not only necessary for my survival, I had realized the importance of unlearning and relearning and that became the ultimate source of strength and resilience for me. Not all immigrants uh, experience or continue to experience mental health problems as a result of unlearning and learning. Some immigrants may find this whole process empowering and enriching as they discover new aspects of themselves. This stage did come up in my life, but at a later stage when I had already gone through the negative impacts of the whole process. Let's have a look at some of the positive impacts and outcomes of this process. Development of new skills and competencies. As I started to overcome communication, language and cultural barriers, I noticed an improvement in my interpersonal communication skills. I was able to create a better professional network and a bigger circle who could be my support group. I have been living in Canada for almost four years now and I can proudly say that I have a network to go to when I need professional life, uh, help, whether it is work related or if it's something that's personally going on in my life. Overcoming negative stereotypes and prejudices. So as I mentioned, a lot of stereotypes and biases are are, is something that immigrants come because they have been deeply ingrained with it. For example, as a woman who comes from a patriarchal society, I had to unlearn the idea that I was inferior to men and I had limited opportunities. Unlearning this made me gain more self-esteem, confidence and empowerment in pursuing my education and career goals in Canada. Availability of resources in host country as from my country therapy is considered for weak people i was not able to discuss openly of how much i needed that back home as well i remember lying to my mom and going to seek for a therapy session because i thought telling her would impact her mental health and i should not be sharing about it so when i moved to canada i was really pleased to see how much it is valued here and i can go on seek professional help here and get the help that I need. And I also started to realize the benefits of a multicultural identity. I started to see the world in a new light. I began to appreciate the diversity and richness that was surrounding me. I started to reclaim this time my identity values that I thought I was erasing or giving up. I started to celebrate my culture and heritage as well, alongside um, celebrating Canada's culture. I, I have been invited to Thanksgiving dinners and Christmas dinners and I felt like this is so unique. I, I felt blessed and grateful that I'm able to do this living far away from my home. I started to express myself authentically and confidently and I started to pursue my passions and interests. Lastly, new coping strategies. I also realized that some of the strategies, whether it was related to money, managing my finances that used to work back home are not going to work here. I had to come up with new adaptive strategies and that also helped me grow professionally and personally and I could take professional help when needed and I was able to practice mindfulness and gratefulness rather than thinking the consequences that had affected me in the past. So how to support the unlearning process for immigrants? What resources? Uh, can be made available to immigrants to make the journey smooth. Through my personal experience, I have learned that the impact of unlearning process on the mental health of immigrants is complex and multifaceted. It is important to recognize that this is not going to be a linear one. It, uh, it takes time and as Cousins mentioned in the very beginning, certain things time. I cannot put a timeline to everything and expect things to fall in place. I had started practicing mindfulness, took time to adapt to new things and being. It is also crucial to emphasize the importance of specialized mental health resources and support that immigrants need after migration. So here are some of the suggestions that I have learned from my own experience and research. Um, Mental health resources, and by that I do not mean generalized mental health resources. Resources that can be culturally sensitive and linguistically appropriate, maybe a trusted 
entrepreneur or culture broker that we can make uh, immigrants aware about so they do not hesitate to seek such resources, creating safe places, whether at school or work, so they do not feel judged to share their um, their fears or doubts or their difficulties that they are feeling to adjust. Recognizing strength. Um, I was told back in my home country, little things are little, big things are big. But four years down the lane, I started taking those little things as huge milestones in my life. When I took and understand the concept that I was being the very first woman to graduate, in a foreign university, no woman in my family has done that. I started taking it as a huge milestone. And so we can help them know that to be proud of themselves and their achievements, recognizing strength. It definitely helps in boosting self-esteem and confidence and also helps them to cope up with challenges and difficulties. Challenging systemic barriers. I was not aware of a lot of rights, but through education in a different country and uh, understanding, researching and connecting with a bigger circle helped me challenge these as well. Culture orientations such as peer support groups or orientations to familiarize new culture. In my first semester, I went through a culture orientation in the first few days before I could start school and I got to know how things operate here or how things are managed here. However, not so case in the workplace, even though it was my first actual corporate job when I started my internship or I, I got my work visa. But I, I feel like if there was a culture orientation to even adapt with the corporate culture, that would have been really useful. Other resources include free mentor programs. And that also, I started to coming know slowly and slowly when I widened my social circle. And there are many free resources that are available. I volunteered for an organization called Dress for Success. I'm not sure if it's here in US as well, but we have that organization in many cities uh, in Vancouver. I volunteered with them and I came to know they help you know, uh, new immigrant women to adjust in a new home country, help to find jobs. I, it was so grateful to be a part of that organization. And I feel like the people like me who had difficulties and are still facing difficulties and uh, many mentor, many cohorts who can help understanding the career paths or help you navigate the challenges. Use of transferable skills. There's a funny story behind this. I was not able to understand that and it also took me three years. So one of my cousins recently immigrated to Canada and she's a chartered accountant. She was really nervous of finding a new job. She kept saying to me, the taxation that I did back home is not going to work here. They don't apply it here. I, I, was, so, I was so surprised of what I explained to her. I, I couldn't understand, is this me who was saying that? I told her, did you work in an office for five years over there? They're only looking for a person who knows how to work in an office as long as you're aware. There are certain skills that you applied in your previous organization that you can apply there. Doesn't matter. They will provide you the training that you can work with. All they need is use of the transferable skills. So one of my mentors in Dress for Success, she told me to identify my existing skills and make a chart of how I can use those skills uh, in various ways and identify skills that have been really impactful in personal and professional life, there I was able to know how I can use my transferable skills, even though I might not be equipped with all the skills and competencies that uh, my new employer is looking at me. And join community organization. Um, so joining these can help to stay connected with the, with the own culture, their support groups, their culture events uh, that can really be helpful for the mental health of an immigrant. In conclusion, I would like to say uh, unlearning is a crucial aspect of immigration experience. My journey as an immigrant has taught me that strength and empowerment comes from within. We have the power to shape our destinies, overcome our struggles, and create a life that is true to ourselves and beliefs. We must be willing to unlearn the beliefs that hold us back and we must be willing to embrace new ways of thinking and being. I believe this is not just applicable to just an immigrant, 
but to humans in general, we have to embrace a new mindset in a situation where we think that our old ways of thinking are not going to work. And unlearning is triggered usually in a phenomenon when your old ways are not going to work anymore. I want you all to encourage, I want to encourage all of you to embrace your own journey, whether you are an immigrant or not. We all have struggles, but we also have the power to transform those struggles into endless opportunities, into our strength, into our empowerment. So it's time to embrace the diversity. So let us challenge our own bias that we have held for so very long and cultivate a sense of resilience and determination that can help us overcome any obstacle. By acknowledging the impact of this process on the mental health and taking steps to address it, we can build a more stronger, inclusive society that celebrates the unique contributions of each individual. Lastly, my journey of unlearning and relearning is not over yet. It has not solved all of my problems or difficulties that I still experience in North America. It is an ongoing process, whether it's me or an individual that is going through unlearning that requires constant reflection, adaptation and growth. It is not always going to be easy and comfortable, but one thing that I've learned, it's always going to be rewarding and meaningful. I hope my experiences can help shed light on the importance of supporting immigrant mental health. Thank you very much for listening to me today and I hope you have a great time at the rest of the conference. Anybody? I was speaking so much. <laughs> I didn't give a pause at all. <laughs> Anybody who has any questions or comments? Yes, in terms of mental health, I'm thinking about probably so I'm interested to know the term guilt, you know, that's one of our emotions. So yes. when you were having to give up some of your cultural, uh -huh. that's innate to you, who you uh -huh. are, how difficult was that for you? And can you give me a time frame of how long did you took working and processing that through? Sure. Um, thank you for asking a very important question that I can so very relate. I remember in my first year, uh, when I would video call my family, I was really missing them, you know, I still miss them. And I was not able to share to my mom, cry in front of her or in, my, in front of my siblings that I'm missing them. I was, I thought, I was always afraid that an answer is going to come back from them that will say, we were not the ones who asked you to leave home. Uh, and, um, but now that I realize, if I had shared that to my mom, it would have made me feel better. She would have made me feel better. But it was certain values that I was ingrained with. I was told to be strong and independent, not asking support. I could ask help, but they would always pressurize me thinking, you can do everything on your own, right? And that was always the guilt. I think COVID changed me a lot in a positive way. I was able to see how people are unlearning so much, whether it is adjusting to a workplace home. I remember initially people had difficulties because they were not able to create a work-life balance, whether it was you know working or taking care of the family. And I, I know a lot of mothers face a lot of difficulties managing both the things, but it did impact me positively. Now that I talk to those same people, they don't want to go back to work, right? Even if it's for them managing work-life balance. So I think it took me almost two years and then COVID was, uh, you know, a great breakthrough for me to realize uh, a lot of things. I was able to volunteer a lot during COVID online, uh, joining, you know, um, volunteer activities, uh, reaching out to people to ask them for volunteer activities really helped me. And um, I still face difficulties sharing uh, what, they, what, what my family might not understand that, right? Uh, one time I told my mom I'm going to uh, seek therapy and she was like so surprised. I, I remember her like seeing her face so sad and upset for the next week. I was like, mom, mom I'm okay. <laughs> and, uh, but she understands. This, is, this has helped me positively and um, I think everything came great through acceptance. I had to accept a lot of things uh, and not be very hard on myself was something that really got me going. Yeah. One more question. Yeah. You're really considered in your family now like a trailblazer. So how do you think your journey and your success that you're having now has impacted some of the other ones that haven't come over yet? 
Oh, that has uh, really impacted them positively. And um, I had my two other cousins who moved to East Coast in Canada. And I believe, and I have a single mom, and I'm very, very proud of that. I hope when my mom sees that, uh, she is proud of me. Uh, she raised me and my siblings. Uh, my dad passed away uh, 10 years ago. And um, if I'm being empowered, she is behind a lot of things. And uh, of course she's single. She is going to ask for guidance, support from her sisters or families in taking big decisions in life. I remember when I asked her, I want to study abroad. Uh, it was a complete no. Nobody has done that before. Um, and to be honest, I was asked by my mom to get married before moving to Canada. She said, it would be difficult for me. I said, no mom, it is my turn to turn the tables and change things that might be helpful. And uh, now that she goes back to the same thought again, she understands, right? And uh, she accepts that I'm not going to use the word wrong here because she was not wrong in her, in her own world, right? It was her roots and her uh, general uh, perspective of surroundings uh, that made her say those things, right? And she's proud that she was able to take one big decision for her daughter and she's really proud. She has never asked me again to get married again, right? Coming from a culture, I go through those pressures every now and then, but she, she was glad that she raised me strong and I'm able to take my own decisions. She was very happy. I came to New York for the very first time. And this is also not done by uh, anybody in my family. I want to be really humble here. But these are really huge milestones for me. So thank you all for listening. Any, anybody else? Yes. I just want to say, uh, it kind of brings to life my father's journey. So I'm a first generation. I was born in India, but I grew up here. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I've, it's such a different cultural, even in my own home. Yes. Three children who grew up in the United States, parents who lived in India, and their culture is completely Come different through. from mine. Yes. So even within our own family dynamics, we have a cultural gap. So it's very interesting. And uh, you made me realize how much my father had to deal with coming here. I didn't have yes. to deal with all of that. I just was, you know, here. So I feel fortunate. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad somebody is relating to that story. <laughs> Thank you very much. It has been a true pleasure to come here all the way down from West Coast. Uh, and it is a great pleasure to hear people from different backgrounds, research and everything, sharing their diverse perspectives. Uh, I feel really honored to come here and being invited to, to speak on this very platform. Thank you, everyone.